Welcome to Tiki Central Canada. Ever wonder what's in that cool, refreshing drink that you just have to have on that hot summer's day? Mmm, me too. Picture a man going on a journey beyond sight and sound. He has left society, he has entered Tiki Central with palm trees, beach sand, blue skies, and God, get me a drink now! Here are your hosts, Craig and Cam, and their wacky views in drinks, life, and maybe information? Hey folks, welcome to Tiki Central Canada. I'm Craig, your bartender and information for the night. Wait, 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 wait. Those are my lines. And else you forgot mixology in there somewhere. Hello? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so this is Tiki Central. Yes, my name is Craig. And yes, that's Paulo over there in the corner there. Just uh, introduce yourself to the show there. Hi, guys. How are we doing? He was taking too long to start, so I started oh, okay. for him. okay. You started for me. Okay. And you just back from honeymoon. How's it going on that? Oh, I didn't want it to finish. Oh, I'm sure. It was so I mean, hello. good. No, but sometimes, like, by the end of the trip, I'm like, I can't wait to get home to my bed. Yeah. This time, it was not like that at all. because well, you did, like, everything under the sun, didn't you? Like, you swam with dolphins. Yes. You skydived. Yes. Uh, what was some of the other aspects of the, the trip? I mean, you did everything. You rode a camel. Yes. In yes. the desert. At night. Yeah. Yeah. It was very cool. Like we did a, a bunch of really, really cool, cool things. things. You should watch the Picky Pair Dubai. We show most of the stuff that we did in Dubai and uh, we do not have a Maldives episode because it would be rated R. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, guess what? Guess who's back? Mark is back. I Ooh. am back and so happy to be back. I know. It's awesome. I love when Mark is here. And I we know she loves happy. when yeah, Mark is here for sure. So I do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So the reason why Mark is back is because we talk about another tiki bar that he's gone to. So it's going to be like the Mark Adventures. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so what's the tiki bar? We, I mean, we'll talk later, obviously, about it. But what's the tiki bar that we are talking about later on in the okay, show? It's the Bally High. Oh, very cool. Ooh, cool. and where is it? San well, Diego. <gasps> but we're going to get to that. Okay, We'll get sorry. to that. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> she's jumping forward in the script. You know, she's just back and she's not back in routine anymore. There you no, go. No. <laughs> I'm totally Jeez. out of it. Sorry. <laughs> Must be that blue Hawaiian that you're drinking over there. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> That's right. By the way, Mark, I couldn't I couldn't make it to the tiki bar that you told me to go to in Dubai. It's not a problem. Uh, we wanted a write up. We wanted some sort of, you know, review I'm or so something. I'm so sorry, but we had like it's a lot to do in very little time. Yeah, I sure. It's called a honeymoon. So, yeah. It's got a honeymoon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no <laughs> resting on a honeymoon. <laughs> there really wasn't any resting. In the Maldives, we still got some time to rest. Well, I got drunk again in my honeymoon. Uh -oh. Just FYI, Here on the go. last night of the honeymoon, I told Justin, okay, I'm going to have a drink. Okay. He was having a Mai Tai, actually. I, I decided, because I don't know, Mark, if you heard our last show, but right before the honeymoon, we, we actually recorded a show, and Craig introduced me to two drinks that I actually really liked. Blue Hawaii. Blue Hawaii and Blue Hawaiian. Yes. So there's me in the middle of the Maldives in a five-star restaurant trying to listen to my podcast on my phone to discover which one was the drink I liked better because I didn't remember. Obviously, I have no memory. <laughs> so I discover, I text him, but I'm like honeymoon. so many, like 12 hours difference. I don't know. Yeah. So I have- he, like four in the morning or something Yeah, he like texted that. me back like three days later. So <laughs> that's how it works. <laughs> Useless. <me>. Anyhow, <laughs> thanks, Greg. <laughs> So wait, wait. In my defense, I text both you guys today saying, "Hey, this is how we're going to meet today," and no one texts back. Oh, so you texted my wife? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So you're off the hook. Okay, yeah. I <laughs> see. I thought that your text saying, you know, just do it at seven. No, there was a question mark there. Oh, I didn't see that. I thought I thought it was just like informing me. So I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, I I'm got sitting it. at work going, okay, nobody's answering the text. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was at the works eating. <laughs> I was like, Norma, worst case scenario will be a show about travel tips all the way through. <laughs> uh, yep. Anyhow, so I, I tell the guy, listen, I had this awesome drink the other day. Can you reproduce it? And then I show him the recipe from our website. Yes. So thank you, Craig, for putting it on existing. the website. There we go. So I show him the Blue Hawaii. He's like, oh, I can totally do that. He comes back though, and he's like, "I don't have blue curacao," and I'm like, <laughs> "Oh no!" Uh -huh. I'm like, "Is there anything that we could substitute it with?" He's like, "I do have the orange con control." Control, yeah. It tastes exactly the same. It's orange liqueur, yeah, exactly. I'm like, yeah. 
sure. He's like, it's just not going to be blue. I'm like, fine. Let's see how that works. So he brings it back and it's fantastic. He's like, by the way, I really love this drink. I never had it. And it's very fresh and very, you know, nature and oh, stuff. Yeah. He's like, I would love, and this is a brand new resort, keep in mind. So he's like, I would love to keep it on the menu. He's oh, like, wow. and since you, you came up with the recipe, you brought the recipe to me and we actually changed it. And it's not a blue Hawaiian because we changed it for contra. color wise. He's like, you get to name it. Oh, oh, wow. There you go. So I now have a drink that I named. I'm the only one that doesn't drink of the three of us. <laughs> That's so funny. And I have a booze drink that I named in the Maldives. So I go to the Maldives and go to the... Uh, Waldorf Astoria. World, and I and order a Paula's wish. Uh, oh, Because I was go. really wishing for that thing. <laughs> and it happened. So you That's know. awesome. Oh, yeah. my God. She's got a drink named after Pretty her. Pretty cool. That is awesome. I thought you two would be very proud of me. That is so cool. So, uh, yes, let's talk about today's drinks. Yes. Oh, it's more than one? Yes, we're doing two drinks today. And tell me, bum, what bum, is bum, the bum. occasion today for these drinks? So the occasion that we're going to talk about for this drink is the Day of the Dead. <gasps> and that goes from October 31st to November 2nd. So, yeah, skip Halloween, screw Halloween. We're going to be doing Day of the Dead. Dia de los Muertos. That's exactly what I was going to say in that exact tone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, so the two drinks we're going to talk about today is a Scorpion Reef, which actually me and Mark just had. And you tried it too. Yeah. And yeah, she didn't like it. But what do you think, Mark? It was, uh, yeah. I yeah. think it's really great. Yeah, actually. It's... I've never had it before. So. No, me neither. So, hey, it's. I, Wait, a I'm drink you've never had? List. Well, it's no, it's a new drink. We just yeah. pulled it out. You know, it's possible. You know, there's many drinks out there. Yeah. There's only a thousand of them out there. Yeah. Mind blown. That Mark did not Mark ever did not have try this drink, this drink before. Wow, that wow. is. Uh, yeah, this was... Well, I tend to avoid the mezcal when there's rum. <laughs> this is true. This is true. I'm the same way. There's rum and board, and hey, I'll take that over mezcal any day. Okay. And the other drink is the mezcal margarita. And yes, both these drinks are made with mezcal. So the second one that I just tried was a, mar a margarita? No, the first one we had was the margarita. This actually is called the Scorpion Reef. Oh. Yes. Oh, so I... I, I... We did it backwards. The Scorpion Reef is less worse than the <laughs> mezcal margarita. In your eyes, yes. 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 <laughs> Yeah, Me and Mark uh, both enjoyed both uh, of them, uh, though. The Paula scale, yeah. That would yes. Be, uh, uh, Paula scale, that's yeah. right, yeah. Like, the, the Blue Hawaiian is a 10 for me because yeah. it's a very girly drink. You know These are very guy drinks. Like, oh, they're very boring. Oh, my boring. God, I just thought of something. So what we'll do on the drinks and the rest of each page, we'll put pucker faces and there'll be a rate from one to five pucker faces. <laughs> Okay. So it'll be like, okay, how many pucker faces is this drink? So the, the mezcal was definitely a five pucker face. It's a five Ugh, pucker face. It's bad. <laughs> yeah, the mezcal mug. You still have it? Oh, yeah. Mezcal no, mug is no. gone. It's okay. gone. That's good. That is going to be so cool. I'm definitely doing that. But you know what? The scorpion one, you could actually use it for a Halloween drink because the way you presented it to me, it seemed like it had blood on top of the ice. Uh, it was pretty the cool. Yeah, well, we'll go through the rest. Yeah, for sure. The bitters on top. There. You could definitely use it as a as a Halloween gift. Oh, uh, see, gift there you go. As a Halloween drink. So. You it goes either way. That are in North America, this drink is for you. Has the presentation for a Halloween drink. So oh, there you go. There and you you'll go. see actually the picture on the recipe page. You'll see the picture for it. And of course, yes, it justifies that for sure. So yeah, so these both these drinks actually have mezcal in it. And what what's mezcal? Sorry, the you know ignorance here. Of no, the no, hey, non-drinker good question. So what it is that uh, tequila is usually made with. Uh, so this tequila actually is made with a specifically one single type of agave plant, and that's the blue agave. And so usually tequila is made with 28 different kinds of agave plants, but mezcal actually is only made with the blue agave. So wait, so mezcal is a type a of brother, tequila? It's like yeah, so of a type of tequila. So remember we talked about before about rum and cachaça? Yes. Uh, rum and cachaça. So basically cachaça is the brother of rum, right? Yes. So this is the same thing. So mezcal is the brother of tequila. Okay. Yeah. Plus, I believe you can only call tequila if it's grown in tequila. Ah. Really? Hey, good little note. I did not know. So, I did not know that either. Tequila is actually a place? Yes. Tequila. Like, like champagne. Yeah, like, like um, I was going to say that, yeah. Or Bordeaux. Yeah, I was going to go for Bordeaux. But... Okay. Well, here's a cool little... Little... You, can pick four... you can pick one now. Thanks, Mark. So, <laughs> here's a cool little note, actually. So tequila is copywritten to Mexico. So in other words, you can't make tequila any other country. Like, you know, we have gin from around the world. Yeah. There's vodkas around the world. There's even whiskeys now from around the world. Tequila has to be made in Mexico. It can't be made in any other country. Oh, well, good, because I don't think it would be as good. <laughs> yeah, same as scotch. Yeah, scotch is made in Scotland. Same as cachaça. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like, true. Yeah, there you go. So, let's see the Mexicans try to make a good cachaça. Yeah. Just, you know, good here, luck. side note. Good, good luck with that. Not, 
not going to happen. <laughs> so Miscalchi is a traditionally a very unique smoky flavor. So it's different than tequila in that way. And also, too, it ends up being sweeter. So actually, yeah, when I did get the bottle that we used for this uh, recipe for the show, I did notice that I did try a sample of it and it actually is sweeter than tequila. That's what that's tequila made me not want to drink. That's what I it was does like. That yeah, for a no, lot of no. people. <laughs> I don't want to be a drinker. Like it was that I got kind of like. How many times you've heard someone like after tequila going, "I'm never going to drink again." I swear to God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and other people are the exact opposite. They're like, "Oh my God, I love this." And I'm like, "How? How?" Yeah, a good friend of mine would do the tequila thing, and every time it would end up bad. Yeah, and he just kept going back. Oh God, I know. I... Why? Oh, That's plain stupidity. <laughs> Well, that's yeah. half. That's half my clientele. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but what you think they're super intelligent? <laughs> well, I'm hoping that some of them are. I mean, jeez. <laughs> yeah, they're just very <laughs> unhappy. Oh God. Well, it's 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 a it's a dish. You see, tequila is usually like I, I don't know about you, but I, when I've gone out with my friends, it usually ends up being at the end of the night or the start of the night. Yeah, it's a bad you know I mean? way either, to start, though. Hey, let's start with the night with a shot of tequila, or let's end the night with a shot of tequila. By my experience, if you start the night with a shot of tequila, you wake up on the beach. The beach? Yeah. Oh, okay. Nothing wrong with that. Well, I think the problem is most of us started drinking tequila when we were youngins. My, oh, that, yeah. That was and me. We, and we got pretty stupid. Yep. That's right. And then we haven't got a lot of money. So we buy the cheapest stuff we the can find. The cheapest tequila we could find. No, no. I actually had Jose Cuervo, the good one. I had gold. Oh, Jose okay. Cuervo. I was doing good shots. But uh, I had okay. five of them. And I only have a memory of two different episodes <laughs> on that same night after I had the five shots. Our last uh, episode with tequila was actually in Mexico. Who? Linda, myself. Yeah. Ah. yeah. Okay. And uh, she, that's the first time she actually had tequila that she didn't mind. So no she was actually way. taking shots. Wow. And she, she doesn't like, drink the hard stuff, no. usually. Well, but, you prepared her already, right? Yeah, like, yeah. She's getting there. Yeah. The uh, But the, the key was getting it chilled. Ah. Uh, when it was chilled, it has a little less harsh on the way down, that kind of stuff. Anyway, oh my God. back to Mezcal. So how did you get this, the inspiration for these drinks and, and the actual drink recipes? So what it was is that we were at an event called the Third World Bazaar. Ooh. Yes, Third World Bazaar. That's yeah. cool. Is Brazil in it? Yes. Yeah, so, well, no, I don't think so. <gasps> I know, no. Oh, my God. So what it is is an event here in Ottawa. It's in October. And what it is is that these guys go around the world for the rest of the year and pick up arts and crafts from different places around the world. So Africa, Asia countries, Russia, anywhere they can. Mexico is one of them for sure. And so when we were there, and what's the they, so what they do is they come back to Canada and for the four weekends in October, they actually sell all the items. Okay. Yeah, so they sell all the items, and actually, and it's, it's typical stuff from each country. All those countries, yeah. Cool. They actually have their own little sort of section. So there's a Mexican country section area. There's an Africa section. Oh my god! And they did not put Brazil in yeah, a third world country. Brazil, no. yeah. <gasps> That's rude, those bastards. Well, it's not so much third world; it is is crafty world. Ah, uh, okay. maybe Brazil is not good at crafts. I... We are actually. Okay. We're pretty good. <laughs> I don't, they're they're probably just scared to get mugged when they go down uh, there, so they're just avoiding it. The guns and ammo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're just like yeah. avoiding Brazil. Let's go to the like you know the safe countries where we can. You know... As if Mexico's safe. <laughs> true. True. Funny. Yeah, I guess so. That's a joke of the year. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So anyway, so then what happened was that we went into the Mexican section and Nora picked up this, like, uh, we've all seen it, I'm sure, and it's actually be a picture of it on the, the website, of this colorful painted skull. Ah, the calavera. Yes. And cool. so we got, we're on the way home and we're thinking, like, well, let's do some research exactly what the skull means. Like, what is representation? It actually represents the Day of the Dead celebration in Mexico. Oh, cool. Yes. Yeah, so that's how we get started because... Norma was talking about, like, so what are you going to do for Halloween? Are you going to do some Halloween cocktails? And I'm like, I don't want to do Halloween cocktails. Yeah, and that's like it's been there, tacky, done that. And it's not tiki anyway. So this was perfect. The Day of the Dead, Mexcal. It's not tiki, but it definitely is uh, some cool drinks that we're going to try out for this uh, And it's definitely more show. tropical than Halloween. For sure. For sure than Halloween would be. We have Day of the Dead in Brazil too, but it's November 2nd. Uh, I wonder if it has any correlation. Similarity. So, Mark, in your research, we talked about this different days, right? Yeah, the um, it all came over from Europe. The um, original celebrations back in, before the church took its mighty hand and 
um, what they did was there's All Saints Day on November the 1st and All Souls Day on November the 2nd. And those were uh, taken over by the Catholic Church, so they allowed people to continue to celebrate uh, the death and the, of people gone by, but we'll make it All Saints Day and All Souls Day. Yeah. Uh, on Souls Day in Spain, they have soul bread where you bring to the graves and things like that. Then All Saints Day, you light a candle where people can head back to wherever they are, right? And that was migrated over to the New World Yeah. with the Catholic Church. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Very cool. But the actual Day of the Dead goes way back to Aztec times. Wow. Um, yeah. So yeah, for it's us, pretty cool. For us, it's no big deal. Like in Brazil, we just... It's just another holiday, right? Yeah, it's a national holiday, but, you know... Most people do go to the cemetery, bring flowers and stuff, like to pay the respects and stuff like that. But, you know, most most people just use it as a long weekend type thing. You know, oh, yay, a day off. It's like Labor Day here in North America. What's it, it really for? doesn't celebrate anything. Because we have Labor Day in Brazil, too. I but... think what it is is supposed to be a day that you're supposed to spend, in your, with your, spend with your family because you're obviously working all the time. So, therefore, it's a free day to kind of spend with your family and do family things. Isn't Sunday for that? Um well, that's, yeah, but I mean, you know, <laughs> some people work Sundays though. Hello, restaurant yeah. business. Yeah, <laughs> true. So, yeah, so let's go over some of these drinks. So yes. the first one we're going to do is the, uh, sorry, Scorpion Reef. That's so the one actually So these drinks have, have the mezcal in them? Yes. Okay. So the Scorpion is the one we actually have here. The Scorpion Reef is the second drink we made. Uh, so it's going to be one ounce of mezcal, one ounce of gold rum or Jamaican rum. We actually did gold Jamaican rum. Ooh. Yeah, fancy, I know. It can be gold, it can be Jamaican, or I'm Craig, it can be gold Jamaican. (gasps) That's right, because I have such a variety, I know. Checkbox. Checkbox, (laughs) woo! Check that off the list. Bam, I am Craig. (laughs) Uh, One ounce of fresh pineapple juice, Uh, yes, your favorite. Uh, Three quarters of an ounce of fresh lemon juice, and three quarters ounce of Orgier. Now, that could be almond syrup, which you can get at any coffee shop. And then two dashes of chocolate bitters. Now, you're going to put all that into a shaker. You're going to shake that up. Then you're going to strain that and then put some crushed ice on top of the glass that you're straining it into. And then put five to six dashes of regular bitters on top. And that was the blood yeah. kind of content that you saw on top of the glass. Oh, so the bitters are actually red. Uh, well, no, it's black, but I think, I guess once it melts into the glass, like into the ice, it turns into a different color. And it's kind of more uh, of a brown, right? Cool. Yeah. So the glass that they used to recommend for this is actually a stemless wine glass. We actually just used a rocks glass. And that's actually, what you'll see in the picture is a rocks glass. And it looks fine. Yeah, it looks really good. Mm-hmm. Like you said, it's kind of a Halloween. It, it is a kind of a Halloween drink. It is because it, it, it is kind of orangey and the mm-hmm. top has that that Blood-like. blood-like stuff on top of the ice. Like, yep. I was kind of scared to, to try shove it. my, oh, my God, what am I drinking? straw in there. Mark went right to it. He's like, okay, what is that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially when he saw my face. Because when I do the... Oh, the pucker face. The pucker face, he already knows he's going to like it. Like, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's usually... <laughs> so, yeah, so It's the same thing with Linda. Here, it's like simple. this. Oh, that's yours. Um, yeah, this one actually was really good. Yeah, with the dark, the sort of the chocolate bitters in there, and then the regular bitters, and then it kind of blends in. Really complimented the rums as well. I know how to lose a wine taste. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't remember after the break, <laughs> so I might need a new one. <laughs> Polly, Polly, you're on the wrong show. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> We're not doing the Blue Hawaiian today. <laughs> Crap, let's redo the Blue Hawaiian. <laughs> cool, so okay. let's go on to the next drink. I'll just have the Blue Hawaiian all day and all night. All day long. She loves that drink. I'm, I'm becoming an alcoholic. <laughs> Sorry, Kat. Sorry, Justin. <laughs> that's that's bad. Oh, no. It's bad. I'm, I'm sure he's not complaining. <laughs> Uh, on, so the next drink is going to be the mezcal margarita. Now, that was the first one we had, and you did the pucker face for that oh one, too. Oh, my God. That one's just off. Yeah. <laughs> that one is almost like pure tequila with other bad stuff involved. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's very, very strong. Yeah, you know? well, it's very much like the um, regular margarita, like the not frozen one. Yes. Uh, only it's got the smoky flavor of the mezcal Of the it. mezcal yeah. So basically, just think of a regular rocks margarita add the smoke. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, that good didn't scenario. Taste like I like that, that at all to me. No, no. It, yeah, no, it did. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. could not sense any of that. Yeah, no, it did for sure. So let's go through the recipe of that one. So that is a half ounce of carousel liqueur, or you can use triple sack. I actually did use carousel, and you'll see it in the drink, the pitcher, the carousel. Um, yes, I know, I'm fancy. Um, I guess get the real ingredients. Uh, two ounces of mezcal, one ounce of agave nectar. So that's like your kind of your substitution for simple syrup or sugar. Okay. It's actually better for you. It's more natural. It actually yes. comes from the agave plant. It's yes. natural sugar. And then one ounce of lime juice. So you're going to shake that up in a shaker, strain it into a rocks glass, add some ice, and away you go. 
And drunk you get. And drunk you get. Whew. So, so these recipes you got because of the Day of the Dead? I'm confused now. Yeah, so what it is is that we looked into Day of the Dead, and one of the, the key ingredients I saw in a lot of recipes for where bars sort of celebrate it is in the mezcal. So then I did more sheets on the mezcal, and I said, okay, this is a mezcal margarita. Because they always try to pick recipes that are doable. Mm-hmm. In other words, means that you don't have to go seriously hunting. And this mezcal is easy to find here in Canada? It's not. Well, I mean, you yeah, you probably do some looking. Like LCBO, not every LCBO is going to have it. This is an example for Ontario. Um, so just do some research, and I'm sure your liquor store nearby will have it for you. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So I wanted something where it wasn't too complicated, as easy to make, but also has the, uh, the mezcal, so you can get the, the real true flavor of it. And okay. I'll, I'll plug the LCBO here. And Ooh. if you go online and search for it, yes. and your local LCBO doesn't have it, they will send it to your local LCBO, or they will even deliver it to your home. <gasps> That's right. So, so LCBO nice. does deliver. You have to do at least a $75 plus uh, order. Supporting alcoholism. There you go. LCBO. Drink at home. Drink at home. No, supporting celebrations. Oh, good call. I like that. that Here you go. Really good. Like that, that was, was a, a slap call. on my face and a punch on the nose. <laughs> That I did not see coming, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> she got blindsided. Celebrating, celebrating Day of the Dead. That's right. She got yes. blindsided. Oh, jeez. All right. So let's talk about some more Day I'm of the Dead. I'm almost dead already. Please tell All me right. about the Day of the Dead. Okay. So let's go on the Day of the Dead. <laughs> Please. So Day of the Dead or what's the translation? El Día de los Muertos. That's exactly what I was going to say. Si. In that exact tone, by the way. <laughs> Uh, anyway, it's an annual event that's held in Mexico from October 31st to November 2nd. And what it is is that families actually welcome back the souls of their deceased relatives. Aww. Yeah. That's like sad but cute at the same oh, time. Depends. It depends on like what state of mind that you go into it, you know? Because if, right. you, if you go in thinking, oh my God, this is so sad, it's going to be depressive. But if you go yeah. in like, yay, today's the day that we welcome them back, you know? And it's it's exactly. a cultural thing and they are all happy about it, then two thumbs up i'm guessing disney made a mu- movie about it recently i think it's coke or something i'm gonna i'm gonna look on google look on google coke. so now we're gonna do a google search well yeah i was you can you guys can talk while i <laughs> coco it's coco it's coco. actually coco yeah so i'm not so on uh, the day of the dead actually like you said is she believes that the barrier between uh, the living people and the spirits world opens up and so during this time the loved ones from the past can return and party with the living family members. Very cool. That would be cool. Yes, exactly. Yeah. See grandma again. Oh. Have, have a few brandies with grandma. Oh, there you go. There I you would go. like to see my grandpa from my mom's side. Yeah, my grandma yeah. for me, I think. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so the living family members honor the departed by preparing their favorite foods, drinks, and leaving them on the offerings, which is also called... Uh, the offerendas? That's right. The offerendas. Yes. Hey, there you go. And then the angelitos... Did I say that right? Yes, you did. Oh, my God. Angelitos, that's perfect. Well, uh, your services are done here now, Paul. <laughs> See you later, peeps. <laughs> I'm joking. Bye-bye. I'm joking. Oh, my God. And so the angelitos are like little angels. And what this word is used for is when you're talking about the children who have died that are believed to return on the night of the 31st. So October 31st of the celebration is for the kids that have died. And they're basically remembering them and having a good, you know, communicating with them. They will stay to, through the day until no, November 1st and visit their families. So the spirits of the adults, though, okay, will now visit on the following day. So November 2nd, the adults visit. And the altars are often prepared with a special way to receive angels. So then elements such as cigarettes and bottles of liquor are added later when the adult spirits arrive. So when the kids are there, they obviously just put flowers and food and whatever. And then on November 2nd, that's when you see the more of the adult things being offered to the, uh, the graves, like cigarettes and booze. So I, I can if do you yeah. had offerings at your grave, what would be there, Paula? Uh, Marlboro Lights. Marlboro Lights. Or there gold. Depends on the culture. That's right. Um, food? Coca-Cola. Food. Uh, food. Oh, yeah. Steak tartare. There you go. For, for first course. Yes. For like She's appetizer. got courses. Even on graves, she's got courses. And then we could do like a, a, a nice filet mignon, like a tenderloin okay. with a saffron risotto. Uh, medium rare though yeah, it has nothing to be medium well rare. done please no, nothing well done on the offering there if I'm the soul I'm just gonna kick that thing if it's well done <laughs> Ugh. I'm gonna be like you don't know how to cook get off my grave <laughs> yeah like what you people doing putting like Jeez. no that's just crap right so would there, there be a blue Hawaiian yes there? please yes okay. a blue Hawaiian. Mm-hmm. Mark what would be on your grave if uh, there well, was offerings I think Mexican would be the 
thing to there do. There you go. Okay. Go with a uh, lovely chicken mole. Oh, oh that would be go. really That's good. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, do that. And uh, maybe some fish tacos on the side. <laughs> <laughs> can there i have some guacamole because <laughs> that's that's one of the only mexican things that i really love is guac i adore myself some guac why would it, it feel like people would put things at paula's grave and you just be, should be walking away and you hear and get a whisper like, guacamole <laughs> it's like, oh it's right we forgot the guac go get it out of the car <laughs> bring I, it to the grave I, see i think that they would be so scared that they got anything wrong and be like oh no if we get it wrong she's, she's just gonna, gonna haunt, haunt us, us for all life. year yeah. We got to get this right, people. That's right. Chef, be careful with that That's steak right. tartare. That's right. Medium rare. That's as far as it goes. <laughs> That's right. You don't want to go to hell. No. Uh-oh. So, Mexican story. Yes. To make a great guac, you need a mojajete. Oh. A who? A mojajete. What is a mojajete? It's okay. a pumice stone. Oh, yes. Thing that and you, you beat it in. Yeah. Yeah. You. Um, and it's a bowl. Yeah. And it's really rough inside, and that's where you put all your spices and your peppers and that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. And you grind it in, and it makes an amazing guac because you get your cilantro and your, your salt and your lime together, and then you right. make paste. And oh, You okay. add all the other stuff. And any anyway, rate, we were in Mexico looking for one of these things. Right. Do you think we could find one? No. 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 Of course not. But you can find it at Winners. So then you go to Winners. <laughs> yes. I got one in North Carolina. Uh, wow. <laughs> Because what, most of the ones you find here now are all uh, smooth, yes, like they're true. polished. No, you're right. And yep. You can't grind anything into it. No. <laughs> you know, I have a funny story about that, too. When I was in Italy in July, I was looking for black garlic, right? Because it's, it's a very difficult thing to find. I went to every single store in Italy looking for black garlic. You know where I found it? Where? Carp Fair. Uh, there you go. <laughs> I kid you not. There Carp, you go. garlic, Carp fair. fair. Everything's, yeah, they, everything's at the Carp Fair. Crazy. Okay, let's carry on. Okay, we, so we the talked about the ofrendas. calavera. Is that you say it? Yes, the calavera is the skull, and in Portuguese, cavera. Yes, and then so the smaller one is called a calaverita. Yes, and so the calaverita uh, de azúcar. Yes, that one is a sugar skull. Yes, see how it's calaverita de okay, azúcar. <laughs> It's just so cute. Uh, so the, if it's not in my vocabulary, I butcher it. Everyone knows that. Yep, yep. Uh, so these placed on the altar and often have the name of the deceased person inscribed on the forehead of the skull. Mm. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. It is. Very different. Welcome to Mark's Adventures. So we actually welcome back Mark to the show. He's been here all day, just like waiting to spill his information onto us. <laughs> yeah, well, it's good to be back and talk about another tiki bar. I know this guy's always all over the place. It's like unbelievable. Between you and you, it's like oh my god, we just the traveling nuts. It's like geez. it's true, Mark. The Between traveling the... nuts. It's it. We, we could take us? that on the road. We sure could. I could play the banjo and you can play the nothing. Okay. <laughs> <It's> the traveling <laughs> nuts. There we go. The traveling nut. <laughs> I can I can play the the. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> like the, the oh. Phantom of the Opera's Little Monkey? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't figure it out, big folks, she's actually doing the little mechanical monkey sound. The like clapping. monkey look. Yeah, exactly, yeah. There you go. So what tiki bar are we discussing today? As we mentioned earlier, we're doing the Bally High. Very uh, cool. Which is, in, of course, probably named after the song. Ah. From South Pacific. Wait, oh, probably? Cool. You didn't do your research? Oh, well, no. <gasps> Whoa. Don't forget, there Are also you is challenging a him here in no, facts. I definitely no. am not. Because it was both the right time and everything. So. Okay. So, Sorry. whereabouts actually is the Bally High? Uh, it is in uh, San Diego. Okay. So yes. San uh, Diego. Very close to the coast. And it's on an area called Shelter Island. Okay. Uh, which overlooks the uh, Coronado Island in the Bay of San Diego proper. Oh. Coronado Island is the home of the Coronado Hotel, which was made famous uh, Marilyn Monroe movie, Some Like It Hot. <laughs> wow. He, looks like, he loves the classics. He eh? does. Yeah. He just loves the Or classics. if you're a little bit later, uh, The Stuntman, starring Steve Railsback. No way. From there? Sa- okay. Same hotel. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Very iconic. Walking, talking, encyclopedia. I know. Yeah, there you go. So. Yeah. I'm your fan, Mark. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel the love in that? Oh, well, yeah, thanks. Okay, let's move on. Don't <laughs> care, kiddo. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's my fan. Oh, my God. Oh, no, please. Are so, you a Leo? Oh, God, no. Okay, because that yeah. sounded very Leo of I, you. I, I, I'm a water bearer. He's an Aquarius. Aquarius? Yeah. yeah, same like here. My mother. Oh, right. Yeah. Two Aquariuses. Oh, my God. That's why I hate you people. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, Shelter Island, however, is not an island. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, I was going to ask that. Is that an, actually a, an island out of the coast of San Diego? No, it was actually built out of a strip of land. It was originally just a sandbar, and materials are dredged up from the bay in 1934. It's only about two kilometers long and a couple of hundred meters wide. That's oh, pretty okay. cool. So so Dubai kind of copied that with the with the palms. The, the palm tree. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that, that was already done. When was the Bally Alley, uh, sorry, uh, when was it actually built? Yeah. Well, here's where we go back to a previous podcast. Yes. About the Tiki Tea and uh, remember Christian's Hut with yes. Ray Behune mm-hmm. went to work? Well, here's a quick recap for those that haven't got to that podcast yet. During the filming of the 1935 version of Mutiny on the Bounty, that famous movie star... Clark... Clark Gable. <laughs> I was going to say Clark Gable first. Oh, my God. Then I was like, no, that's not how I'm supposed to say it. Uh, Built a bar in Catalina Island. It was reestablished on Balboa Island in Newport Beach and became very popular there as well. Mm -hmm. But hugely popular, Balboa Beach. Huge movie stars going there and that kind of stuff. And it became so popular that they built two more. Okay. Wow. They will, uh, the owner, Arthur Lachelle, opened two locations, one in Laguna Beach and the other on... Shelter Island. Oh, Oh. there you go. Okay. Yeah, and on August the 13th, 1953, Christian's Hut, or just The Hut. The Hut. Yeah. The Hut. And it spared no expense at the time. Well, so much so, it went bankrupt within a year. Oh, no. They made it so elaborate that it was, yep. Too much wood there, folks. But not once, but twice. Oh, no. Yeah, that's sad face. (laughs) Jeez. Sad face. (laughs) Sad face. In 1954, it was L.A. Investor, and his accountant, Tom Hamm, went down to check it out to see if it was a good investment. Yes. As soon as Tom walked in, he went, we're, we're taking it over. Oh. Okay. And within a year, he was actually the owner. Oh, okay. Uh, of okay. the Bally High. So then it was called the Bally High mm-hmm. uh, after that and, uh, in 1954. So this, is this uh, Bally High, is it like a typical tiki bar that we've talked about in the past where it's like small and dark and, you know, not a lot of seats and uh, kind of escaping from reality? Well, no, it was built to be a big deal, much okay. like the other Hollywood oh, ones. Oh, okay. So they had floor shows and all that kind of stuff. But this place is very open. Lots of glass overlooking the uh, the San Diego Harbor, and it's just gorgeous views. P- locals come in there like crazy because of the views and everything, and it's a really neat structure. It's got a circle, you know, it's a roundish type building with uh, all kinds of stuff on it. There's st- still lots of relics left. Yeah. Uh, despite it being uh, of the age and being remodeled a couple of times. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So, so, I mean, obviously it's got a large capacity then, right? Like it's not like these oh, very much small so. Hundreds bars. of people can fit in here. Oh, they, okay. They have weddings and all that kind of stuff. Oh, there. wow. Yeah. So, so it's definitely what, not like the one in San Fran that you went. Right, no. the Tiki Tea. It's not like yeah. the Tiki yeah. Tea at all. Yeah, yeah, no, no. That one no. was so what as hours, big as this room. So what hours does it actually... The, uh, well, it, it's seven days a week. Oh, okay. Unlike Tiki Tea, which was only four days a week. Exactly, yeah. Eight this, days a week. <laughs> wow. I'm so bad at singing. Yeah. Sorry, Paul's going to do a sing-along here now. Yeah, with the... And uh, <laughs> with it, of course, is they have really good food there. But yes. it's higher end than yes. And so, but they have a happy hour that goes from three to six every day. Oh, or cool. weekday, sorry. Weekends is no happy hour. Oh, cool. So, what's yeah. exactly in the happy hour? Like, what is? Is there anything special that we need to know? Yeah. Well, they have this thing called the their mai tai. Ah, so they have their own version of a mai tai. Yes. It's called their mai tai. Well, it's their mai tai. It's, it's just called it's mai just tai. called the mai tai. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you said there's a thousand recipes, right? So there you go. There's a thousand and one now. And oh my God, it's closer to eighteen thousand. I know. And it's, there. it's really boozy. Really? Yeah, like, like, yeah it's it's a hundred percent booze. Oh what? my lord! Oh jeez. Yeah. What do you mean? Well, it's just rum, no rum, mix. rum, and then syrup. No, not syrup, but uh, liqueur, liqueur, liqueur. You're joking. Oh wow! So no, 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 no mix in there. Whatsoever. So it's not a mai tai. They should have just wow. invented a new name. It's yeah. their Mai Tai. It's their Mai Tai. That's right. And uh, it's insanely popular there. And, Did you uh, have it? Oh, yeah, I had numerous. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's Mark now. Come on. You know. Yeah, yeah Jeez. You had yeah, to think yeah, about yeah. that for a second? Yeah, I know. Stupid Jeez. question time. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Stupid question time. Because <laughs> what they do is, uh, regularly it was uh, 9.25 for the Mai Tai, but at the happy hour, it starts off at 6.25. What do you mean it starts off? Price-wise. Yeah, but what do you mean it starts, starts off? off? So what do you mean? Does it go uh, up? Yes. What? Oh, no. Yeah, every hour the price goes up by a dollar. Oh, oh my God. God. That's so hilarious. it's just like vote early, vote often, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but they uh, they sell a ton of these things. Like, this year's, well, you can only have two or three of these. Well, people are just. So the, back. let me get this the first hour. Everyone's like clocking them back so fast because they're like, okay, I get the same price. And then the next hour, like, oh, I got to pay a dollar more for this drink now. Damn it. Yeah, oh, exactly. Wow. Did you yeah. feel that way? 
No, I had a couple of... As soon, as soon as it got to 7 o'clock, I started having different drinks. Uh-huh. <laughs> Smart ass. So what what drinks for you stood out when you were there? Well, before I go any further, I have to okay. remember, they have a tote board there. Okay. Like this digital tote board going by at the number of Mai Tais that have been sold. Oh, no way. To date. Wow. And What's I, the number? I checked yesterday, and it was just over 2,651,000. Oh, Do you remember how much it was God. the day you were there? No, that was a long time ago. That was, and he was drunk. How many Mai Tais? Do you think I could remember? <laughs> That's right. I just wanted to have a, a notion, you know, yeah. like if a month ago, I don't know. Like, I don't know. It's when like, it's like, a year now. Year now. Year, oh, yeah, always. Okay. He's for a guy. Come on. Yeah. You know how many rum drinks he's gone through since then? See, but it would have been fun to hear, you know, in a year, how yeah. many. Yeah. I think you should go back there a year from now and check how many million it's at. There you go. Okay. Well, we do want to go back because when we went to LA, there was a whole bunch of things that were closed. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Enchanted oh, Tiki no, no, Room at Disney. Oh. Oh, no now way. Now it's open. The Enchanted Tiki Room was closed? Yeah. yeah, they were doing upgrades. Yeah. Oh, no. That's and Justin went right when they opened again. So did you do like the you know, the national vacation? Did you punch some moose in the, in the nose? No. <laughs> I looked for a mouse to kick in the... <laughs> in the nuts. <laughs> you see it right, national vacation? Uh-huh. Oh, no. She has not seen it. <laughs> okay. Let's explain. So National Lapoon's uh, Europe, sorry, vacation. What it is is that this family goes across the country to go to like a, a Disneyland. Okay. All this stuff happens to them along the way. And they finally get there and the park is closed for renovations. Oh, I did see that. So I did see he that. Punches the no, the moose in the nose. But no, you damn it. <laughs> I did. I do remember that. Yeah. Oh, my God. So what drinks other than that one stood out for you? Well, there's um, we had the paralyzing puffer fish. Okay, that sounds interesting. Seriously, that's yeah. the name. Okay, it was similar to a blue Hawaiian. See, now I feel stupid that I didn't give my drink an actual like fun cool name, name like that. Oh, well, what's better than Paula's wish? Paula's wish. I like that. That's a cool name. Puffer fish drunk. What? What did you say? <laughs> paralyzing puffer fish. Exactly. That one's way better than Paula's oh wish. Oh my god. <laughs> or even like like the 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 suffering bastard. Yeah, that that's Justin's drink. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a really old drink though. Uh, yeah. Yes, but still like. See? She's just saying she would really like a cool name. Yeah. She thought she said you know. Like, I actually I actually thought about it for a while, but I was so drunk by the time he asked me to name the drink that like, I couldn't I just, get creative. Yeah, Paula's but like wish. Tiki's tea, they had. Their big drink is Ray's Mistake. Yeah, come on. That's not a really cool name. Oh, well, in some one, ways, and right? one of the other drinks there is like Ted's Drink. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so at least you didn't do that. So yeah. You go Paula's Drink. Mine's Paula's Wish. Exactly. Yeah. The it's Drink. Better. Yeah. <laughs> the Next drink. is going to be Paula's Wish, the movie. <laughs> Paula's yes. Wish, the movie. So the um, other drinks. Yes. Um, we had the Paralyzing Puffer Fish. Yes. And there's the Goof Punch. Oh, okay. Now, the Goof is one of the mascots or characters from the hotel. Okay. Rather than the bar. And the goof was on the original Christian's Hut when it moved. Now you're talking about like on, like as in like he's on the on, roof? On. Okay. He's a big head. Yeah. And he overlooked like the whole area, like a huge oh, head. Oh, okay, okay. Like, like Goofy from Disney? No, he, it's his name. He's guy, he's got- it's his the, name. His teeth are all crooked and that kind of stuff. He's wearing a clown hat. Oh, uh, okay. Right. So he looks like, no one knows how he got the name the goof. Okay. But there's a picture of him being transported because he was on two previous Christian Hut bars before he got- Transported the, to this yeah. Bally High, yeah. And the other one is Mr. Bally High himself. Oh. And Mr. Bally High, there's a sculpture out front. Mm-hmm. It's a sad-eyed cannibal. Aww. He used to have tusks, a bone in his nose, but kids kept jumping on the bone and breaking it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, it was right. So, at any rate, he's just been refurbed, as is the <coughs> whole hotel recently. Yeah. Uh, the Mr. Bally High is a fabulous drink, and it's actually listed in... Uh, Beach Bum Berry. Oh, okay. Beach Lombardi. Yeah. We haven't heard of him in a while. I know. Yeah. And you know who he is. (laughs) Yeah. He actually has a whole little chapter on the the Mr. Belly High. Oh, okay. Or a little section on that chapter. Right, right, right. Where he went down there to try and get the mugs. So it actually has in it uh, dark Jamaican rum, light Puerto Rican rum, coffee flavored brandy. Oh, cool. What? Pineapple juice, lemon juice, and sugar syrup. Now. Uh-huh. Greg, I brought you a present. What is this? This is, in oh fact, my God. some coffee-flavored brandy. Oh, this my God. I want to smell that. Awesome. Hang on a second here. Okay. There you go. No, you can smell it first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, sweet, yeah, sweet kind of coffee. Here we go. I love that the little bottles. Awesome. I love the little vase he brings yeah. it in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And oh, so now wow. you now you can you don't have to look around for Tia Maria. No. Or Kahlua. Or Kahlua. I'll just make uh, that. Yeah, apparently they're using uh, some <laughs> other... 
Paul's like sucking. She's snorting like cocaine. Oh my God. <laughs> What? I want to actually appreciate the oh, smell. I'm sure you are. <laughs> it's very, like, it actually burns the nostrils. Well, it, it's it, pretty strong. Well, it's 40%. Proof. Oh, okay. It, it is liquor. My nostrils yeah. felt that. <laughs> yeah. It's brandy. It's not like a liqueur. I don't know. Well, apparently, also, the Valley High uses blackberry brandy now oh, instead wow. of this stuff because yes. it's not that easy to find. Well, yeah, I've never heard of oh, it before. My so God. that's why I brought you some. Oh, and I'll give you a little, uh, did you know? I did not. That Allen's Coffee Flavored Brandy is prepared and bottled at MS Walker in Boston, Mass. And they sell a phenomenal amount of brandy to the state of Maine. How much brandy do they sell? In 2008, the sales of 1.1 million bottles Woo. in Maine, but only has a population of 1.3 million. <laughs> That's fantastic. So it means there's babies with baby bottles sucking coffee brandy. There's people putting coffee brandy on their cereal. There's <laughs> like dogs are licking coffee brandy yeah. out of the out of the bowls. You do realize that that's what they do to to, to Canadians, right? With maple syrup, which well, you're yeah, doing we, right now. We die hard on maple syrup. Okay. So there you go. You got some of that. You can make Very your cool. own Mr. Bally High. I'm definitely doing that. And we're gonna do is we can put that recipe on your yeah. page there, Mark. Okay, sweet. Yes, it'll be on there for everyone to see. And uh, here's a great picture you took for that one, by the way. Oh, thanks. Yeah, so the uh, Bally High is definitely a place to go. San cool. Diego, there's all kinds of things to see. Shelter Island itself, uh, the city code when it was first built, yep. says that every building on the island has to be tiki. Oh, because it was oh. the very first, because yeah. it was, uh, very first building there. And did they, uh, did they stick to that? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Oh, cool. Yeah, so there's this amazing hotel there we stayed at, Humphreys Half Moon. And they have a concert series there with uh, bigger names like uh, uh, Ringo Starr was there, the Beach Boys go there, oh, that wow. kind of stuff. So people, it's really popular, but yeah. it's full blown tiki. Wow! Wow! Geez. Yeah, it's like even tiki though, is village. that far from downtown though? Like from San Diego's tiny. Yes. Right. And no, it's not far from downtown. For sure. Yeah. 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 yeah awesome. Yeah. So another uh, cool adventure uh, tiki bar for you guys to check out. And like I said, we'll put all the information on Mark's page for that. Did you know? I did, I did not. not. Ooh. Damn. Learn, Cam. Learn. That's how it's done. Indeed. Ouch. Man. Poor Cam is not even here to defend himself. Oh, no. Don't so, worry. He'll he'll probably oh, he'll slap back. me back next yeah, time he's he here. I'll just wait for it. Exactly. He's witty. He's witty. I know. Uh, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> There's some animosity there between the two co-hosts. No, it's yeah. not. It's just because it's really hard for, for me when someone's witty in English. Because then I'm like, I don't understand what he means. Yeah, what was those words you gave me for the, the naked ladies, like scantily clad? I think oh it was my... scantily clad. And Mark, she's like, what is scantily clad? Seriously, he uses words I did not know existed. So You know talking... how you are the, the human encyclopedia? He's the human dictionary. Like but I think yeah. he invents stuff, too. He, he does write for a living. I don't know. <laughs> That's true. Uh, yeah, oh, boy. He knows a shit ton of words. Yeah. Just saying. Yes. Big words. Big Very words. big. So let's go through some cool facts about Day of the Dead. I did not. <laughs> We've already gone by. I know, I'm joking. Oh my God, that was good. That was good. I, got, yeah. I ain't. So uh, Halloween actually is a holiday that promotes obviously the fear of deaths. But on Saints Day and Day of the Dead, actually it's a celebration of the, the deceased. Okay. And so the Day of the Dead celebrations can also be seen in actually other countries when I did my research. So the United States, the Philippines, Australia... All these countries have like the parade every year for Day of the Dead. So it's really? really, so they really actually cool. do like carnivaly things. Yeah, cool and around the world. And so, if you know me uh, personally, you know I'm a big, huge James Bond fan. So I do not actually... know you personally. Yeah. Well, now you do now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, Mark's research actually, because Mark actually co-wrote this. By the way, I need to mention this. By the way, Mark did co-write the show. Yay! With small words. Wow. With small words. With That's words, right. I understand. Thank Don't you. you understand? So, uh, Thank God actually, Cam didn't write it. Yeah, so, yeah we wouldn't, I, wouldn't I wouldn't be able to pronounce it in English None either. of us would. He's the only one that just blurts it all out. No one knows what he's talking about. <laughs> he's a walking dictionary, yes, mm -hmm. I know. Uh, so anyway, in the opening scene of the James Bond film Spectre, our hero is actually walking through a large Day of the Dead parade in Mexico City, which is really cool. It starts off like that, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. Okay, it so I did watch and, it. Yeah, yeah. So what the problem is is that actually in the city that they filmed it in doesn't celebrate Day of the Dead with parades. So the whole scene was actually Hollywood stage with hundreds of extras. And so the city actually inspired, after filming this, does an annual parade now. What for city Day was of that? The Dead. Mexico City. Ah, Ciudad de They Mexico. did not do a parade before this, before they actually filmed this. 
So James Bond, million dollar question, who is your favorite James Bond? Pierce Brosnan. I don't know. He, he, he was just like cute and, you know, sexy and fun at the same time. He had his quirky lines, eh? He had his really cool lines. Yeah. So yeah, he'd always pick on Q because Q would make up, you know, some cool thing, whatever, some gadget, and then he'd make a joke about it all the time. Like this one where he puts the pen in, in the dummy, he activates the, the hand grenade. It's basically the, the pen's a hand grenade and they get behind the wall and the thing, of course, explodes all over the wall and he goes, don't say it, don't say it. He's like, what? The writing's on the wall? And it's just so, it's perfectly lined and perfectly pitched. It's like, it's awesome. Don't remember, Craig, the lines. <laughs> I'm a guy. We remember, I know Norma says, he's just, I'll, I'll say a line from a movie. And she's like, what movie is it from? I'm like, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, oh, what is with you and like remembering movie lines? I'm like, I think every guy does that. Yes, no, they do. doing, yeah. I have that with some movies though. Like for example, a De Niro movie that he's like, yo, you good, yo. You very, very, he says that to Billy Crystal. I say that to everyone. I'm like, yo. You're very, very good, very yeah. good Joe. <laughs> you that, know. That's a line. There you go. That's a good line. There you go. That's, that's a good a line. That's a good one. That's a, no, that's a really good one. No, but no. I have no idea what Pierce said or not. Yeah, yeah. Well, James Bond. Uh, Bond. Mark? Well, I'm old, so it has to be Sean Connery. There you go. Sean Connery, Roger Moore. I think mine for me is Sean Connery, Roger Moore, then Pierce Bronson is number one in that mix. Uh, the new guy, Daniel, is it Daniel Craig? Yes. yes. It's in his movie, Spectre. I kind of stopped watching it after that. I watched this one. I did see this one, but it's... It's just I not don't James know. Bond. He, he just doesn't have the face for it. I don't know. I don't he, know if he's too young or something. It just it doesn't quite no, fit. No, it's not. He he. I think he has too little hair for one. He's too he's blonde. blonde. Yeah, he's too blonde. So it, it almost seems like the hair is not there. And I don't know. Like yeah, I'm, no, I'm, I'm grabbing the details because you guys don't notice these things because you're guys. You're not like looking at his appearance. No, no, I noticed that. Yeah, but no, I'm he actually just saying look for, like a Bond. he doesn't look like a Bond to me. And he's yeah. not a bad looking fellow, you know. Oh, like, no, and he does a good nothing job. against him. He's a great actor yeah. in everything he does. It doesn't, for me, yeah, exactly. it doesn't sell. It doesn't sell for me. It's um, like it's like uh, ben, ben Affleck, Affleck as a <laughs> Batman as a Batman. I was about to say it. That just won't ever happen. He can keep doing movies as a Batman. He's not Batman. Michael Keaton. You know, like he or Christian Bale or yeah, Christian Bale. Yeah. yeah, he's just not Batman. He doesn't have that that the lips for it. There's a very tenuous uh, James Bond uh, Sean Connery connection with Tiki. Oh, oh my God! I know this one actually. Yes, the. Um, do you know which it is? Steve Crane, who owned the Contiki's and all those things, was okay. married was married to Lana Turner. Okay, because I was going to say, there's another cool fact of yep. Sean Connery and James Bond. Uh, it's actually shot, one of the movies, so Thunderball, there's a scene where she's shot on an island. It's where the Bay of the, the, the bay of Pigs, like where the pigs actually go swim along the, the shoreline. So me and Cam did it on the show, and Cam does this perfect Sean Connery imitation of, damn, I have to work with the pigs now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So uh, they got divorced, Lana Turner, and she married this mobster. Yes. Real life mobster? Yeah. I real life that mobster. That's cool. That's yeah. pretty cool. And uh, he was very jealous. Yeah. And followed her over to England where she was doing a film with Sean Connery. Oh, no. And he came on the set with a gun. No oh. way. This mobster guy. Wow. And, and Sean Connery just walked over and grabbed the gun and punched him inside the fit. Get out of here. <gasps> really? Wow. There you yeah. go. Real James Bond. That's a real James Bond right there. Bam. Yeah, exactly. And everybody was like, Is that it for today? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, very good. On that note. Anyway, so yes, let's tell everybody who we are. So we are www.tikicentralcanada.ca or .com. Oh, there we go. Hey, new line. There we go. I like that. You're going to throw that in there now. Yeah, because you always say .ca and, you know, it could be .com. It is .com. I'm just saying, is that Cam usually says all one word. So now you've actually had another line in there that it's not Cam. Okay. Ah, I'm not Cam. I know you're not Cam. You are not Cam. I am not Cam. Not Cam. You are not Cam. I'm not Cam. Good. Not Cam. No one <laughs> near is Cam. <laughs> oh, God. Wow. We should really Jeez. stop talking about Cam. Okay. Cam, Cam, Cam. Cam, 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 Cam. <laughs> Lord have mercy. All right. So anyways, on that page, here we go back to what we're doing. Uh, on that page, yes, it is actually the main episode that we just did right now. Also, through the recipes for this episode, uh, there is a page there for Paula and uh, Picky Pears. You have a new video out there, which yes. is from Dubai. Dubai. It's pretty cool. It's it's very cool. Dubai. We have to check that out. And stay at the end. There's a surprise at the end, so oh, don't go okay, anywhere. Okay, a teaser. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I like Ooh. that. Yep, yep. You're <laughs> going to think it's done, but it's not. Oh. Uh, you, should, you should actually watch this one. There we go. Pretty cool. Mark will. 
And mm. uh, so on Mark's page, we will add all the new information about the Bali High Tiki Bar and the recipe for the drink. And uh, so also, too, there's a recipe page, there's an episode page, and there's also a subscribe page, folks. So please, please do subscribe to our Probably. show. Probably. For the love of yes. God, man. Think of the children. Think oh, of the God. children. <laughs> That's right. Maybe we should just put a child on the front page, on the main page, just looking sad and going, please help us. No, no. <laughs> a little beggar kid, homeless from Brazil. With a mug. Sure. With a mug. With tiki that mug. Works, that please, works. Exactly. please fill my mug. Please fill my mug. Anyways, guys, just help us. If you want to, you know, have Hear good more. booze, you have to listen to us. We're For to that, help. you have to support us. So That's support right. us, That's please. Right. And so I think that's all we got. We're going to go off and make some more drinks there with this new liqueur here. The no, Mandy. or else I don't get home. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, uh, let's go, folks. And uh, thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Later. Buenas noches. Ciao. Oh, there you go. Well, I don't know about you, but I got informed. Guys. Hey, Guys. Where's my drink? That sounded very Leo of you. I, I, I'm a water bearer. He's an Aquarius. Aquarius? Yeah. yeah, same like here. All oh, right. Yeah. Two Aquariuses. Oh my God, that's why I hate you people. <laughs> <laughs>